I'm pretty positive that we're all like this sometimes when we watch movies. Well, personally, I'm not really someone who reacts a lot when watching movies. Those, however, are reactions that are really, that really are running in my head. You won't really see the visible effects of how I feel, and a lot of times I would seem emotionless, but don't be fooled. I am very emotionally gullible. It's one of the reasons why I don't really like to watch good movies, because it makes me feel so many things, and... It's weird. Now, I don't know if this is because I study communications or media in college. Maybe that's why I get really into the movies I watch. Or maybe it's because I'm just a really naturally appreciative person. But every time I do watch good movies, I feel like a part of me is a different person. And it's like I've experienced something really amazing. But the worst part about these feelings that I get after movies end is that after it, especially the ones with an impactful ending, ah, uh, the emotions and just goes so much in me and I, and I can't move on. The things that movies make me feel linger for quite a long while and and, and, and now that I'm thinking of it, I think maybe this is just part of being human. And I just don't get these feelings a lot. Maybe that's why it feels weird. Back in college, I watched a movie called The Love of Siam or Siam. I'm not really sure, but I watched this like seven or eight years ago. It's two and a half hours long. And it's a very quiet movie, which leaves you a lot of room for all the emotional things that will go in your head as you watch it. And this movie has been by far the movie that I will not want to watch ever again. Not because it was bad, but it was so good that when the movie ended, it, it kind of left me. No, it did not kind of left me. It did leave me into a deep emotional depression when it ended. And even now as I'm thinking of it and just talking about it, the emotions just come raging at me over again. If you have an open mind, I would recommend watching The Low Siam or Siam, I don't know how you say it. It's a really good movie. But yeah, right now as an example of how emotionally gullible I am, all I did was talk about a movie and then and then I just feel everything all over again. I'm starting to feel all these emotions that uh, are not not so great. One thing you should know though is that I don't really see my emotional gullibility as a big disadvantage or a bad thing because whenever I'm in these moods or emotions, my creativity also increases. Like for example, if I watch a sad movie, I can easily make up ideas or scenes that are sad. Whenever I watch something that has a bright feel, I would have an easier time to make or create things or be energetic to do something. I'm still really in the process of making use or taking advantage of how easy my emotions sway because who knows, someday I might be able to make something great out of it. And that thought makes me really appreciate myself for being emotionally gullible. I used to think that this was a weakness that I had, but as years go by and as I got older, I started to realize that these things that we see in ourselves are negative do not necessarily have to be negative. If we learn to see the good in everything, then we'd be a lot, a lot more open-minded, a lot more analytical. and. In my opinion, we will have more space for us to grow. And to conclude this TED talk by me, I would like to say that I firmly believe that our lifetime is not enough for us to fully blossom. So we really better start working on it now. Like now. I'm Bo, and I got no jams. I'm recording this in a very awkward way. Sometimes I'd be, I would be, 
I would have to record it like this <laughs> because the tripod is not tall enough. Yeah. 